That's very good. <clears throat> Brand here. This is Brent on the right side. And this is Beans on the left side. My golly. Some days... Some days I ask God. Why is it so unfair? Some guys are stronger than others. Okay, it's not. It's not that serious. Brent feels like a wall sometimes. Other times, the wall falls over. But today he was a wall. Look at this. We just all stopped just to watch this match. Brian versus Jack. Damn. Okay, now look. If Jack beats me on the regular, and Brian can hook Jack. Hmm. No fuck away, I can beat this man. <clears throat> Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so I'm out here. Dragon and back pressure and look this little baby. And so I go for the strap. We wanna watch this match because dude, who doesn't want to watch this match? Brian versus Jack? That's crazy. Fresh for fresh. I would actually would love to see it. I didn't see Jack pull, but I'm assuming he wasn't fully fresh. Anyways, pulling Brent here. Folk. Oh, God. Why is he so big and technical? I think Brent can be top five in our team on the right. I think he can pull off a of Kyle Harbine and just be a, a, a doom, a bringer of doom with his cupping and lat drag. I'm just pressing, pressing my hardest. The only reason I, uh, the only reason I lose is because I feel like my elbow's gonna explode, but dude, t trust me, bro, trust me. If it didn't explode, I totally win everything. Like, oh, oh yeah, 100% all the time. Give me LeVon, give me Devin. As long as my elbow doesn't explode, we're chilling, guys. Alright, so I'm in here, doing a little knife edge technique, then I'm a little elbow hopping, because that's how I do it. Trying to drag, oh, see, it's the elbow, guys, I'm telling you. If it didn't explode, I'd be your number one rank in, in, in the third hand. Uh, I felt Brent's left wrist give up. I don't know if that's level, level of fatigue, but all of a sudden, it, it felt very, very manageable. You went from a straight concrete pillar, to like three inches of rebarb, and then it went and it became a became something that I could handle. It's like, huh? Wonder how that works. So I decided to just double down and stick with it, and then it became a wall again. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this real quick and get back. Yeah. Please, please excuse the lack of pop and spunk in my voice. I worked a lot today. I was shoveling gravel for eight hours and digging a, a trench. S okay, okay. Back to arm wrestling. Uh, honestly, I just wanted to do a voiceover. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's going to be different levels of energy as life happens to have different modes of living uh i just gotta pay rent guys i mean come on now that's we got that's why we work right we gotta pay that rent so i think i, I really really like training with jack um i don't like him as a person I'm, I'm just joking i'm just joking i really really like jack um especially as a person because he's very reserved and he just he's kind of like in and out he's in there business and then he said he bounces and he's like all right see you fellas next week i got a life to live outside of this boat so i really do appreciate the time he he uh he gives me because i know he values time and he perceives time as something valuable towards himself so you know um gotta gotta appreciate people who give time to you to uh it's basically an investment, you know. You, you want to see others win. You don't want to just be a loser. So, uh, 
we working on working on hand control I think my pronation just kind of pops the wrong way I think I'm gonna start low handing in the start and then I'm just gonna cup in um, I was rewatching Jack just cut my hand like four times in a row I was like man what's going on y'all my pronation is not bad in training I'm, I'm out here pronating pretty well and then in reality I'm just getting absolutely boofed but that's why I like uh, practice videos you can just kinda look at it when you, when you get the chance you know so going in here with a little hybrid hook top which I really don't like I just don't like how I kinda just fall into a mixed lane I'd, I'd rather just pick a lane I like a severe single use lane and hit it and just drop that rubber on the road so I gotta find me a hooker uh, I got I um I gotta find me a top rolling lane or a hooking lane because hybrid lane just kind of get washed with uh, enough side pressure. You know, you just do a hybrid and you're not really moving anywhere. You're just kind of meh, and then they just press you with the side pressure. Uh, I'm keeping this video in because Brian's not a a guest. Uh, frequently, this is actually his first time and probably. Oh, for it's gonna be a while before it comes back because he lives in Vegas. Essentially, he's just talking about you should listen to Jacob for advice, but he's always been a side pressure guy and hits people with the side, and which is gnarly, stupid nar nar. So, yeah, Brian's a freaking beast, and he's like, oh, in Vegas, you know, we just we just hit and train and we go back to four, then once we burn out, we just hold. But you, you should ask you uh, for advice because he knows more than me and I'm still learning. I think, I mean, that's not verbatim, but definitely, you know, some words. I'm just, you know, I'm just listening, replaying words. But you can still see, you know, Jack and I pulling slightly and Sean's just like, Daniel, what's going on, y'all? All right. I get to pull Ben. Uh, I'm, I, oh, God. I need a nap. I did a voiceover after this, so I'm bringing in, I'm introducing Ben twice, but I love this man. Man's a straight OG. Man's a straight, uh, you could say he's a sensual man. <laughs> yeah, he felt really fucking strong today, that day, so. Can't count him out. Always rooting for him. Alright, I'm gonna cut this, and then he's gonna start with the next one. Alright, cool. Damn, Piper, damn. So. Pulling tall Ben here, Ben 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 Ozuski, and I think right about here, huh? I noticed a uh, significant power gap. I think it's more of a fatigue level gap because I've been pulling Brent and Jack and Brian and Sam Poffchair, so my reserves are low. But uh, you know what? <clears throat> I'm not gonna say but. That's the wrong word to use. It's just, man, I wish I had more, more endurance. But that's just part of the game. Sometimes you just show up empty. That's okay. Nipple, nipple. Oh, damn, Bernie, damn. Okay, that's not Bernie. That's definitely Sean. <laughs> Minnick. I think these are kind of fun, doing commentary. Uh. I'll, I'll, I'll get better eventually you know I'll fall into my groove and just eventually I'll be myself in front of that speaker and uh, yeah cuz you know you know sometimes you want to plan things out and you want to practice you want to have notes you want to have some sort of guidelines but I think I'm just gonna free, free flow it cuz I'm just kind of ex exhausted but I still want to do this so I can have it not in my mind and I could do my homework uh, later on okay maybe this is my this might just be rambling into a speakerphone but but we were but we're watching arm wrestling we're watching myself arm wrestle and you guys are watching 
my journey, my 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 story, how to arm wrestle, and how I got into arm wrestle. Uh, I definitely would like to get to that eventually. So Chris, I had to acknowledge that Chris is stronger than me on the right, uh, especially just especially on the right and my training style leading up to my match with Chris was like 45 pounds 60 pounds max just a lot of volume and I was doing a lot of hand and a lot of just a lot of high volume because I thought that's what it took to get stronger because my assumption was watching Devin Lorette uh, it was just you know you gotta like, let your tendons adapt to your to the weight and the level of conditioning takes a long time and it's layers and layers it's like putting a piece of paper on top of a piece of paper and then watching that layer stack up but when I pulled Chris I just felt something totally different I was like fuck me there's like 33 people in this room and I'm totally being outclassed by Chris right now and so luckily for me Chris is a good person he's a good friend and he's like hey uh, what are you doing? How's your training? And then I was like, oh, I'm doing this, doing that. I'm not doing this. And he's like, well, you should do this. You should do some heavy statics. Just go heavy. Um, and he said, yeah, I'm just max. I hold like 150. The most I ever held is 150, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing 100 pounds for six reps, four sets. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, damn. Damn, bro, Piper, Piper, Piper. That's a fuck ton of weight. Piper is a character in Brawl Stars. She's a sniper, and that's just like I just like to say her name. Shh. So, I actually had to go to the back to the drawing board. I was looking at my weights. I was like, forty-five pounds, fifty-five pounds, sixty pounds, sometimes seventy pounds. And yeah, I'm, I'm, mind you, I am doing a lot of volume. I'm just blowing up my pronator. I'm like, in my mind. I'm like, no one, no one can beat this. I'm putting 60 pounds on my fingers. Like, how can anyone beat this? But when you get a guy like Chris, who's just static holding 100 pounds and then curls it for six reps or four sets, 24 reps, I mean, brother, he's gonna fucking flashbang you. <laughs> like, he's gonna put like a, like a metaphorical finger in your butt. Um, I'm not trying to get vivid or anything, but... Okay, definitely. Okay, no one's putting a finger. I'm sorry for. Sorry for that. Yeah, I know. Imagination gets wild, and you guys are just thinking about that now. So I'll move on. So what I decided to do was like, all right, fine, fuck it, I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm just gonna do static holds. And for the past, uh, I'd say month now, I've been doing static holds, and I definitely feel a lot better. He told me. Uh, so I told him, I was like, hey, how about I just start at 7? He said, yeah, that's where I started. And then I did a 5 pounds a month until I worked up 100 pounds. I was like, damn, Chris. Thank you for making me better. Because I'm not trying to be delusional. I'm not trying to have anyone sugarcoat me. I'm not trying to have anyone say, oh, good job. You, you know, you, you're getting better. You know, it takes time. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I appreciate the <laughs> the condolences and and just, you know, the etiquette, just being nice, and, you know, you just gotta be nice, but, uh, I, I, I can take it, I'm a pretty, pretty realistic guy, I'm pretty pragmatic, if you just straight, straight up tell me, hey, you're fucking up here, you can do this there, you can get better here, then I'll set aside some time and, you know, get better, um, uh, so it's totally different philosophies, because, uh, you know, the whole Devin Lorat thing, lighter weight, more volume, and then I was doing it and it worked up until it didn't work, and I, I got affirmation from Cody Schlicker. Cody's like, yeah, I do like 45 pounds too, you know, just a lot of a lot of reps, not that much weight, and like save your tendons and joints. So I was thinking about the long run, I was like, yeah, dude, if I just layer up, I'll just get fucking, st like, I'm thinking about arm wrestling as in the my bones are a sponge. In... In, 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 a, in a way, they are. And so I was thinking of it in a different manner. But Chris is just like, nah, fam. If you just want to flash, you want to just throw a grenade in their face and just flash bang them? Static hold, brother. So, 
I know not everything works for everyone, uh, of course. Uh, but you gotta you gotta figure out which one you like the best and see if it's for you. I like static holds. Luckily, I really do like them. It's uh, different. It's new, and I'm gonna keep trying it. Hopefully, I get two months, three months. No, eventually I'll get to a hundred pounds, right? And then uh, let's talk about Brian Lafayette. He doesn't even do static holds. He just has a high pulley, and he he reps out like 80 to 100 pounds, which is still a stupid amount of weight. But he's just hooking it, and he's been pulling for about 10 years, a little bit longer, just a smidge. And so his amount of layers and tendon strength and repetitions, his volume far surpasses mine, only being three years, coming up to four. But so. I just gotta figure out what works for me. But his hook is just fucking nasty, bro. Damn, I want that hook. God damn you. So, like I, I was saying, I think you guys should try different varieties. And if you're stubborn, just keep doing it. Just if it, if it works, if it doesn't break, don't stop, right? But for me, it's, it stopped working. So I gotta change it up. But at the end of the day, if you don't wanna. If you don't want to change lanes because you don't enjoy that type of training and you're not gonna, you're not motivated or you're not disciplined to do it, then that's just you. That's fine. You just gotta enjoy that lane. That uh, what's that called? I wouldn't call it mediocre. Oh, there's the comfort. It's a comfortable lane, and I get it. It's a hobby. It's you know. But for me, I'm trying to bounce. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what I'm saying. I am trying to find a bounce. Yeah, I'm trying to bounce around and see what works and see what sticks. Just be like the Russian spies. You know, they just throw a shit ton of shit at the wall and see what sticks. And uh, So, yeah. Static holds. Different ways to train. I'll probably rehab with uh, lower weight. But for now, I am just going to keep it heavy. I'm doing 75 pounds static holds, 70 pounds on the pulley, and have a 100 pound dumbbell. So that's start. That's a start, right? Let me know if you guys enjoy this sort of commentary. I like it. I think I'm being more of myself. I think there will be some some form of undulation when I don't work and I do work. This is a commentary post work when I'm freaking running on fumes, brother. I'm tired and it's late. But when I work, I'm thinking about doing this, so I'd much rather do this and then uh, have my pr productivity uh, be finished. Okay, I'm, I'm, what, what I'm trying to say is I, I need to do homework and I can't have this in the back of my mind. So when it comes to Jacob Abbott. I used to call him Jacob Abbott because I didn't know his name, pronunciation. That was back in 2019. Jacob is a mythical creature. I think he's too nice though. He should have told me I was fucking weak. But I guess that's not the right way to encourage your student, right? Um, I guess I'm, I, I didn't think I was like week per se but I felt pretty confident going in to arm wrestling Brian because I was just you know I was feeling good I just arm wrestled for six hours in Idaho with Idaho guys and last practice I arm wrestled for I did arm wrestling training after arm wrestling practice I did a I did the practice and then I went home and I trained for two more hours and I was like oh sweet I'm ready for Brian I'm chilling well then reality hits, you're actually not that strong. You're actually still a, still a student. I'm not sure about my trajectory. I'd say it's still pretty high. I still love the sport. And my passions for the sport never really, never really, uh, never, they don't waver after losses. I just like, I'm just curious on what I need to do next. So, when Jacob Abbott trains me, mm, 
he's 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 more of a meet you in the middle type of man. If you meet him in the middle, he'll meet you in the middle. So your form of interactions and information depends on you. You know, it's not his job to to coach you like that. He has so many people. There's just no way he can go to each person and, you know and everyone's different you know there's like so many forms and styles and a thousand ways of personality so i like it i like his approach you, you meet him in the middle uh, i think i come i'd say frequently and some weeks un infrequently i ask him questions like hey uh, i have a question about this about todd Zilla's way of bone lock structure and should i hook here should i press here is this a hook um but at the same time, I don't want to just bore him. I just want to like, hey, let's just bang. And he does. He gives me more than I can. He gives me more than I can chew. And I'm like, folk, <laughs> I don't want to pull him anymore. He's just sapping me. I'm like, is this is this a form of is this a form of affinity that most people have and some people don't? Or mo uh, I think I said that the other way. Most most unique unicorns have and common folk don't. You see, I just don't see him getting that tired. And he just pulls everyone. Man, I've been rambling straight for 20 minutes plus. Uh, if you if you actually listen to this whole thing, let me know, and I'll just keep I'll just keep this up. Actually, on a second thought, I'm just gonna keep rambling. I'm just gonna just ramble. And you just you get to watch free arm wrestling content. Like that's just how it works. I'm just gonna ramble. I think therapy, not that I need therapy, <clears throat> not that I need therapy at all, uh, I just want to ramble, this might be a little fun thing, as long as I have awesome arm wrestling content, you know, we're good, hey man, just play me in the back of the kitchen, you just, you know, make a little food or a little grub or, 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 or don't, you know, Joe Rogan podcast ex exists, I wouldn't fucking, I, I wouldn't, my feelings won't be hurt at all, his, his substance is so much better. Okay, 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 okay. I'm arm wrestling John Neal. I think he's injured as we're pulling, so he's actually a madman. He needs to relax, heal up, come back. When he comes back, he feels like the fury. He feels like a thousand suns channeled into three pixie sticks. It's just too much force and too in the too little pinpointed area. He's a beast. Uh, I'm gonna cut this off. I don't want to be 30 minutes, so. Yeah, been building out. I hope you guys have a good one. Bye-bye.